Hey YouTube and thanks for watching Junkworks Garage. Well, as you can see, I got my metal shed here and my temporary shed there, which unfortunately became not so temporary. It's been there several years. I don't know, I've had this for quite a few years, but unfortunately a couple years ago, it tangled with that tree right there and lost. And ever since, it has not been waterproof. And I'll show you what I've had to do for a couple years now, and it doesn't really even work all that well. So as you can see, this uh, so-called temporary shed has turned into just kind of a catch-all for whatever extra. I didn't really care if it completely stayed dry, but wanted it somewhat out of the weather. And uh, unfortunately, yet again, that has been less temporary than I hoped. And then we come in here, and as you can see, in this one, I have to tarp everything. And so I put a tarp over everything because it's, it's leaking. You can see where I've just kind of took a, I think it was a two by four or something and beat the roof back kind of into shape, but it just leaks like a sieve now, especially in this area right here. So I got to cover everything up with a tarp inside here anyways. Uh, most of this was way worse a couple days ago than it is now. And I started to pull stuff out of here to kind of resituate and try and fix and figure things out. And as I was doing that, I have a couple of my wheelchairs in here and things under these tarps, but it, it everything's molding as you can see i don't know hopefully you can see that that tarp right there this was on top of my wheelchair luckily my my electric wheelchair that i use the most isn't too bad i was able to kind of clean it up but like the tarp that's over it, it's all moldy and a bunch of other stuff is just everything that's got any kind of cloth on it is moldy which also means anything that's metal in here which there's some tools and things are probably rusting but like i said this is actually a lot nicer than it was before i could barely get that lawnmower in here sideways going across here uh, a couple days ago so i do believe this is it for this shed i decided to just kind of throw everything back in here and i kind of put it in a little nicer just because i had already kind of pulled a bunch of stuff out and I also decided that this was the second year I had been doing the cleaning of everything and I clean everything up just to put it all kind of back and anytime I need it I end up having to clean it all again really good so it's just very inconvenient it's not doing the job anymore so it's time for a change. So in the end we are going to go from this to this. I have also realized that this video is just going to be kind of how much I paid for the shed, me kind of setting the shed up, getting it put here, and a little bit of what I think right off the bat uh, as far as the build quality, where I got it from, all that information. So most of this is going to be me talking and the information on this shed because I have realized that it, otherwise it's just going to be too long a video with me building it out. So at the end of this video, there will be a link to the playlist. It'll be tool shed playlist where I will have some more videos on building this shed out, painting it. As you can see, it doesn't come painted and putting some stuff in and, and all that kind of stuff. So there'll probably be a few videos in that playlist of this shed. So if you want to go see me build it out, organize it, and some of the products I'm going to use for it, go check those out. Otherwise, stay tuned and you'll find out more about this shed. Here it is, a few, about three weeks later, and this is where they had to drop it. Unfortunately, I got this from Ziggy's and I kind of assumed they would have a better way of dropping it off, but it was just kind of a dump truck where they slid off the back until it hit the ground and then slid it forward till it dropped off and hit the ground uh, so they and they don't move it once that is like that so i assumed i was going to have to do a little bit of situating with this but unfortunately i'm going to have to do a lot more luckily i got my tractor over there and hopefully that will move it for me so 
I don't know if you can tell, but we've started moving this thing around and it's just taken some a few couple of, I got these smaller jacks. I think they actually are, would work better than the big jacks because they go a little further. And I actually kind of started this a little bit late. I have to excuse my filming as well. I'm doing things by hand. But we got those dollies underneath there and we actually put those on the front first, but underneath there's three four by fours that this sets on top of that you move it around on. And I had those on the front, but I've pushed that as far forward as I can without them falling off of here. I will say those little Harbor Freight cheaping 999, whatever dollies are working great. I think if I had four of those, I probably could just move this thing around on top of this uh, pad here, but I would be leery of doing that. So I'm just kind of moving around a little bit at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these jacks so we're just on the dollies and hopefully we can start sliding things. Well, unfortunately, not only did the battery die, but I went to move the trailer and move a bunch of other stuff so that I could kind of I needed to get my tractor through here, which is where my trailer was. So I was needing to move it from that side of the shed over there and then around here and then push over here where you can probably see the kind of tire mark looking marks. So what I had to do to get this in here is I ended up pushing it all the way that way for the most part, then came over here and pushed it that way and kind of went back and forth a little at a time. Until I got it where I wanted it at. Luckily I did have George, my old tractor here, several videos on that in my Massey Ferguson playlist if you want to go check out some videos on that. And I have a big 35 inch tire behind the Volkswagen there that I put up against the wall and used to kind of push on things, but it seemed to work pretty well. Let's go check out the inside. So here we are in the front of it here. We got the fairly large door. I could fit my razor through this door if I wanted to. It's a 50 inch razor and I measured it and realized I could actually fit it in there if I wanted to. I am going to unfortunately have to make some sort of a uh, ramp to get in here. So I'll have something on that at some other point in time. It, might be in this video depends on how this goes you can see it does have two locks on it they're both the same thing i don't know why they did that or not but they did so i have it the other thing this is a ziggy's which is a local i believe it's a local northwest area type thing uh, i'm not positive i do know the sheds are built over an eye the panhandle of idaho so if you can't find these i don't know if you can get them online or not but i will put a price in the screen here and that's why the only reason why i bought this one is i went everywhere looked and called and everything and this was the absolute cheapest one i could get that wasn't one i needed to build now this is a 10 foot by 12 foot is what this one was for that price as well so you can get cheaper ones than this that aren't already built for you. But by the time, not only does it already come with the roofing on top and it's completely done, ready to go, and it comes with everything finished basically, and it's primed, you're gonna have to paint it, which the other ones you have to paint as well. But you have to buy roofing for those other ones that you get shipped to you from like Lowell's and Home Depot and those kind of things. At least you did when I was looking at them so that adds up real quick having that not to mention i didn't feel like building it and quite honestly i do believe i got a little bigger shed actually for less money all said and done and i didn't have to build it but yet again it depends on if you live in the area and whether or not what kind of deals you can find in your area so we're going to go in the door here and as you can see it's just made out of particle board most of these are don't have any lights or any electrical in here i do plan on doing both electrical that is 
your normal 110 type electrical as well as some solar stuff in here. But if you look at these walls, the way they built them, the only thing that that back framing is for is to hold on that outside paneling. It is not actually attached other than a couple of nails through here. And I don't even know if they bothered to attach it on the bottom in that corner. But same thing over here. All, all both the sides are built like this. They're not coming into a double plate up here like you would normally build something. So yet another caveat on those built sheds that you do yourself. I'm pretty sure a lot of those are probably built a little better. Although I've seen several of them and they still have the, I believe it's two foot on center. I'm assuming I'm just kind of looking at it and it looks about two foot on center uh, for those right there. And they didn't bother to like put one here to actually finish this off with sheetrock, which I'm not going to do. So basically in the corners, they just built plain old walls like you'd have in your basement or something like that and didn't bother doing everything correctly in my opinion. But yet again, it's cheap. There's a reason why it's cheap. Uh, as far as the trusses are concerned, I was told that it is this, these sheds are made for the snow load we get here. Um, I believe he said something like 40 pounds. I believe that goes like pounds per foot or for, per inch. I don't know. You'll have to look that up yourself. But uh, it's supposedly rated for the snow load in my area, which we get some pretty serious snows every now and then, as you've probably seen in some of my other videos if you watched any of them. Regardless, it is super hot in here and I did get venting. I'm glad I did as well. That was extra, but it was only 30 bucks to have them put that in. So I went ahead and sprung for it and let them put it in for me. It would have cost me that in parts, pieces and time anyway. All right. So yet again, it's an eight by 10 shed. I am for the most part happy with it. I, I, I knew about this whole situation the way they built these before i bought it um, not by the time i decided to buy it but before i actually sprung the money on it i was a little disappointed in that part of it but yet again that's why there are two by fours laying on the ground right here so i am going to do a complete build out of this shed so we are in the shed yet again. We're getting ready to kind of finish up some of the building. I have found a couple more things about the Ziggy shed. The flooring, unfortunately, I went to walk over here and heard kind of a snap, crackle, pop sound. And I have my cowboy boots on. Yes, I wear cowboy boots with shorts sometimes. Uh, right now they're the type of boots I have for working in. So there you go. Uh, anyways, I happened to put my heel down right in a spot and take a step and I heard that snap, crackle, pop. And I called because I thought maybe they completely missed the joist altogether or something like that because I was kind of going down and I can tell there's a definite difference where I'm stepping from where they cut the piece or have a piece. And then I realized the joists are actually going this way and they have their pieces going this way on most of them except for the one back here and that kind of makes for a weak spot right in the center of each of these joists which i don't know they don't look they look like they're 16 inch maybe 18 inch on center i'm not positive on that but the flooring they use must be no more than half inch and I'm thinking maybe even quarter. I'm a heavier man. I'm 230 pounds. So I understand that I need to lose weight, but I'm figuring on putting motorcycles in here, maybe some ATVs in here at some point and it should hold up to that. It's a big door uh that expects big things to come through it so and like lawn tractors and things like that so i can already tell from that crack snapple pop that i got i can't make it do it anymore it whatever came free came free 
but from that sound that at some point this is going to be a very weak spot right here that will break through at some point so uh, yet again this is one of those things you deal with when you pay less for things well hopefully you got something out of that and you enjoyed it yet again go check out my tool shed playlist it'll be yet probably in a link somewhere here or here by now and get out there and get your junk working. Thanks for watching Junk Works Garage, where I'm proud to say I'm a jack of all and master of none. You all have a good one.